Hey everybody, Reagan 71 back with you for part two of making our scroll saw and fretwork basket. Before we get to this though, I want to respond to a viewer comment in the first episode of this series from The Talking Grape. He asked about breaking scroll saw blades and specifically speed of the blade. Now one of the reasons your blades will break is because they overheat, they get brittle, and then pop, they break. So a couple of things that you can do. Put the tape on your workpiece on the front and back sides, the clear packing tape. That's going to help cool the blade down. Another thing that you can do, wildwood designs, cherry tree, uh, places like that, and even some home centers sell what's known as blade lubricant, saw blade lubricant. You can Google it or you can just go to Wildwood Designs and find it. But this stuff is dandy and all you have to do with this is start up your, your blade before you put your project in and you just run it into the blade. And I like to take a little bit and put it up top as that blade heats up, it'll actually melt and work its way down the blade. And this will also help your blades, uh, keep your blades from getting brittle. The faster the speed, and one of the things you might be doing also is pushing that work in too fast not letting the teeth do the job. So just slow down a little bit and try these tips and I think that'll help. Okay, so now we're just ready to scroll out the insides here. I've got lots of little intricate cuts. I'm just gonna start on one side and work my way over and we'll make these cuts. Once again, remember, we're stack cutting so it's important not to put side pressure on the blade. Don't shove it in too fast. Let the blade do the work and put the work the lines you want to cut, make sure they're going directly into the blade with no side pressure. Starting out with a little bitty V here. So I'm just going to come straight to the V. Eating some of that wood along the line, spin it around and take off in a new direction. As I pivot this work, I'm pivoting that work nice and smoothly so that that blade is constantly eating into the wood, but keeping in mind constantly no side pressure. For this next little bit right here, I'm just going to eat away on the line until I have the, the, the width or thickness of the blade here so that I can put it up against the line and march off in a new direction. Pretty sure I got it there. Smooth it out. I'm kind of pushing the work in and just kind of doing this little number right here. And now we'll take off in a new direction. I start the blade, I let it run, and then I move. I don't start it and move it all at the same time. Start the blade, and then move. And I'm gonna back up right here. I'm gonna come back in and attack this line and come back to and join the, the uh, cut that I've already made and that'll actually clear a lot of this waste area out and clear along that line and then I can spin it around and take off in a new direction. That should be enough of a gap right there to where I can spin this blade around without it hanging up. And it is. Back the blade up, new direction. Now that I've made that cut, I'm going to spin around, come right back in like that, take off in the new direction.
Now for the purposes of this little training video, I'm using one-sided plywood just because it's cheaper. For your particular application, I recommend using either quarter-inch uh, oak hardwood or poplar, whatever hardwood you like, or double-sided uh, plywood, oak, birch, whatever. Looks pretty good for the bottom cut, huh? Not too bad. Well, I went ahead and put some mineral spirits uh, to get the glue off uh, from the packing tape and also to get this paper off. Boy, it is dandy using mineral spirits because it just lifts right off like that. Oh, look, it's a doily. Now I'm going to dry fit our sides. The next thing I'm going to do, once I've got them dry fit, it's looking good there. i got to make a bottom for the thing though, see that? Instead of trying to get a ruler down in here, it would be kind of hard because of the angles. I'm going to take this pencil and I'm just going to mark, I'm not going to mark flush with the bottom. I'm going to come up maybe an eighth of an inch and I'm going to place a little mark. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I'm going to use that to get my width measurement. Now for the actual length measurement, I'm going to go flush this up on some plywood and then mark this side right here. And we'll cut it out. Okay, I've got the bottom piece cut out and I just dropped it in here. Everything is still kind of loosely dry fit, but as you can see it fits good. All I need to do now is just sand a little bevel. Uh, to the edge so that it fits down in there nice and tight because right now it's just one uh, sharp corner touching I want it to bevel in that way I can run a bead of glue and it'll be nice and secure there's some beveling right there I don't want to eat too much of the the, the very ed top edge away because it's it's pretty close you know I should have marked out a little bit further when I did the uh, marks on the ends but we'll give this a try and see how it does we can kind of line it up like that looks pretty good well guys that's pretty much it aside from sanding and dipping it in boiled linseed oil and sealing it with lacquer that's the way I do it if you'd like to see exactly how I do that I've got a video that I'll post right here on finishing fretwork 
But uh, one other tip that I will give you, though, is if you'll pick up a bottle of Aleene's Tacky Glue, you can get it at the craft department at Walmart. You can actually dip this, sand it, dip it in boiled linseed oil, finish it off with lacquer, and then glue it up. It goes on white, but it dries clear, and you can use it on finished wood products, which is really handy when you have lightweight scroll saw fretwork. If you had something bigger, of course, you'd want to use screws, nails, things like that in order to attach pieces. But uh, for something lightweight like this, it's just the trick. The next time we get together, I'm going to teach you how to do compound cuts on a scroll saw, and that's going to enable you to make some really neat 3D stuff. That's coming up next time. And this only had four inside cuts, by the way. It's really cool. We're going to do this next time. So make sure you subscribe and join me, and I'll see you then.